Okay, welcome to part two. Um, sorry we had to end in such a rushed, surprising way. Um, the time sort of snuck up on me slightly, and we we left off here, where I was just writing the title to the file. So, um, um, right, yeah. Uh, so what we need to do here is use the file put contents function, spelled right now, to write to the cache file and what we're writing is the title at the moment obviously this won't do anything because this condition is still false so what we can do is just add or false at the end which will force this little block to run because false will never be true if that makes sense just hit reload it takes a while to load because it's making the API request so now if I go back here and open the cache file hit reload you see now we get the most recent title in the cache file which is good so, um, if we go back to our page and just remove this testing or false thing, and then in this else block, we want to get the title from the file. So we can define file uh, title, sorry, title as file get contents cache dot txt. And then under here, we can just do echo title, and then we should always have the title, and it will be updated every ten minutes from the YouTube API if necessary. Notice how this page now is much much quicker to load than when I did the demonstration just a moment ago. So that's the um, title, getting the title of the most recent video dealt with. So now we're on to the sort of image manipulation stuff um, and what we're going to do here is um, well create the signature image basically um, and we're going to define uh, a new image which is going to be IMG that's going to be equal to image create true color and the w this function takes two parameters which are the width and the height so we're going to have it 600 wide and 24 pixels high um, some forums have a limit on the width of signature images um, what thing, one thing that you can do to get around this is to like like set this lower like set it to 100 then edit your profile once you've finished editing, change it back to 600 because it doesn't check it every time, it just checks it when you edit your profile so there's a way around that if you run into that little problem Okay. Um, once we have the image created we need to define two colors, one for the border and one for the background if you remember the background was slightly darker red than the sort of sorry the border was slightly darker red than the background so I'm going to create two variables now um, border is equal to image um, image color allocate the first parameter as with the image always with, as always with the image functions is the image and then the second three parameters the following three parameters are r g and b values that make up the color you want to use um, you can use hex digits if you're familiar with html notation so say if you want to create the color um, f one seven 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 which is the color we'll be creating you would do 0x the first two digits which are f1 0x again 77 0x77 like so so that's how you can use HTML you can also use integers between 0 and 255 which again just re re represent the amount of red, green or blue um, we need to find another color for the background which is just going to be equal to image color allocate again image is the first parameter nope sorry im as the first parameter and then the color which in this case is going to be 0x f1 0x cc 0x cc okay so that's the colors defined um, this was a space here it's lucky that it tabbed to there anyway uh, the next thing we need to do is just fill the image the whole image with the border color and then we're going to draw a square on top of that to make the background so it's a little bit misleading in a way because the border is actually the background of the image and the background is the sort of a square on top of this but it kind of acts to mask off the image um, the reason for this is just because it's sort of the quickest way to do it um, you might we would have to draw we'd have to sort of faff about with the colors not the colors the width of the line if you want to draw lines um, yeah this just makes the most sense really so what we're going to do is image 
fill, which fills the whole image, not file, image fill, which fills the whole image from a given, from like a given point uh, to, to the bottom right corner with the given color. So, as always, again, the image is the first parameter. The second and third are the x and y coordinates. So, if I do 0, 0, that will fill from the top left to the bottom right. Okay, and the final thing is the uh, uh, the sort of color resource, which is just the variable that you define to the image color allocate function. Um, which in this case we're just going to give the um, well border. That's the variable we used. Okay, and then we need to um, draw the rectangle on top of this. So that's done using the image filled rectangle function. Uh, again, image is the first parameter and then it takes some five more parameters. The um, first and second are the starting point, so the coordinates of the first point. You basically it, you, you define two points and then it draws a, recta, a sort of shape, a rectangle, um, with one corner at that point and then the opposite corner at the second point. Um, you couldn't see what I was doing, but I was waving my hands and pointing there, but useless, anyway. Um, so, we're just going to define 3 and 3, because we want it 3 pixels in. And then we are going to define, um, yeah, so that's the top left point. And then we're going to define the bottom right point, which is going to be 5, 9, 6, 20, because we want it 3 again. Three, we want a border of three. That makes sense. Um, you can play around with the sizes yourself and sort of work out how they work. Okay, so um, the color of this is just going to be BG. So now if I um, output this image, well, actually, okay, I'll do the last thing that we're going to do first, which is output the image. Um, I'm going to choose it as a, do it as a PNG image, so image, PNG, image. And if I reload the page now, you'll see we get a load of mess. Um, this represents the sort of image. Well, this is the contents of an, of an image file, but basically, um, what we need to do to make it actually display it as an image is use the whoops the header function to send the content type header. So we're going to set the content type header to image slash png, like so. If I reload now, you see we get this image uh, with a nice border all the way around and then this bit in the middle is where we're going to write the two strings the first one is going to be most recent video and that's going to be in bold and the second one is going to be the um, sort of dynamic video title which is not going to be in bold um, and again we're going to find two colors for these so what we need to do between here and here is write the two strings to the image um, so let's just define the two font colors that we're going to use. I'm going to call these font1 and font2. Um, and again, this is going to be done with the image color allocate function. Image as the first parameter, colors as the second, sort of the next three. So I'm going to do this as a nice sort of light gray, dark gray, sorry. So uh, 0, 0, 0, x, 3, 3, 0, x, 3, 3. 0x33. And then we're just going to copy this. Whoops, I've lost. Okay, so copy this down. Next line, change this to font 2. Image color allocate 2 2 2 2 2 2. Obviously, you can use any color you want uh, as long as it's valid. So now we have the colors defined, we need to use the image TTF text. Um, you can use image string, but it will look horrible. The image TTF text function will use a font file that you give it um, and use that font nicely rendered and then stuff. So we're going to use the image TTF text function, like so. And again, first parameter is the image. Second parameter, I believe, is the size of the font. Um, maybe not. I should have checked that. Well, we'll work it out in a minute. Set so that to 11, whatever it is. Um, the next parameter definitely is the rotation, like the angle, because if you can set the set it like to be basically rotated text, which, which we don't want, so we're just going to go with zero. And then the next two parameters are the position, which we're going to set to eight and seventeen, 
which are the coordinates of the bottom left um, of the image, uh, of the text. The text box, really, um, is almost the bottom left of the first character, usually. Depends on the font. Anyway, um, the next parameter after that is the font color, which we're just going to use font 1 for that. And then following that, it's the file name of the sort of um, TTF file, the font file. Um, so it's sort of a, it's a bit buggy, this, in a way. You need to um, specify the font file like this, with a dot and a slash. You can't just use the font file name. If you do that, it will look in your system's font folder, which, if you want to use one of those, that's fine. If not, you need to use the dot slash to start it out, start it, start the file name. Um, and what that means is just the current folder. So you can do like any path, but they're in the current folder, the same folder as this script. So we have dot slash, and now I called it bold font dot ttf. And then the next parameter following that is the um, string that you want to write, which I'm just going to do most recent video with the correct spaces. Okay, so that's the string written. If we reload our page now, dot dot dot, I think it went to the API there. Yeah, it did. Anyway, uh, you see now we have this most recent video string added, and it's nicely spaced. Let's just try. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the font size. So let's just make. It, let's try making that 14 and see what happens. It gets bigger. So there you go. That is the font size. I was right. Um, so font size, rotation, and then these two are the x and y coordinates. Okay. So just put that back to normal. Oh, one thing. It seems that on some servers, um, the text is wider than on others, so you might need to play around with the size to get it to look right on your server. Anyway, um, all we need to do now to finish this off is copy this, paste it down, um, we're going to change the font to just font, which was sort of the um, standard uh, font, not bold, and then we need to uh, change the text that we're writing to title, and then we need to change this other, this is the x coordinate, this 8, the x coordinate of the start of the font of the text. We're going to set it to 156, which might seem random, but I have played around with this already. So let's reload this now, and you see we now we have this image. Um, most recent video, and then your image. So uh, your image, your video title. So that's pretty much the end of this. There are a few other points I'd like to just um, make. Um, the first one is that um, for, if for whatever reason um, the YouTube dot com site is not available this script may take like up to 60 seconds to load which will look very messy on a forum uh, so what we're going to do is just here I'm um, sorry before the header is we're going to call the any set function and we're going to set the um, default socket if I can learn to type and that should be a string D ah, okay D default socket time out. And we're going to be setting that to 1. Just 1 second, that's basically the lowest it can be without being not working. That will mean that this script will terminate within 1 second of finding YouTube inaccessible. And the other, the other problem is that if the YouTube um, site is not accessible for whatever reason, um, it will cause the file get contents function and then therefore the simple XML load string function and this line to throw an error um, and sort of terminate the script. We don't want that. What we want to happen is just um, we want it to sort of well, it'll still look broken, but we're just going to have it display the background effectively because it'll sort of try and carry on and it won't be able to find the title eventually. Um, so what we're going to do here is just set error reporting uh, equal to zero. And what that will do is hide any errors from PHP. Um, see, these two settings are not something that I recommend you set for all your scripts, uh, but just for this they make sense as it will probably be used quite a lot. Anyway, let's just preload this to make sure it's still working, and it is, so that's the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you found some of this useful, and thank you for watching.